Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here, and in this video I'll be showing you how to create an analog style pad in Arturia Pigments. This is a preset called Far From Shore, and it was included for free in the Synth Vault in June 2022. Let's have a look at how to create it. So let's start with Engine 1. So with it being an analog style pad, you'd think that I would use the analog engine for it. But actually, I find that I get better results when using the basic waveform in the wavetable engine. So in engine one, we have it set to wavetable and we have the basic waveform wavetable loaded into it. On the position, we have it set to 0.668, which gives us this sawtooth wave. To keep it analog, we're not doing anything else in the wavetable engine. So there's no frequency phase mod, phase distortion or wave folding or anything like that. And we're not gonna be modulating the wavetable. We're going to switch on the unison engine and it's set to classic mode. We've got the voices set to two and we've got the detune up to 0.711% with the stereo spread all the way to 100%. And that now sounds like this. that gives us a nice bright sawtooth wave and you can hear we've already got some envelope shaping going on as well so we've got the attack on the VCA set to 562 milliseconds so quite a quick attack there we've got the sustain all the way up and then we've got the release set to 3.83 seconds there so that's giving us quite a long release we're also going to be modulating the fine tune very slightly with LFO1. So we'll turn on the LFO1 fine tune and you can see that we've got it set to 0.02. Now that is just a very, very tiny amount just to give us this kind of warbling pitch. We've also got the LFO rate being modulated. So if we come over to LFO1 here, we've got it set to a sine wave as you can see and we've got the rate set to hertz so it's not synced to anything. It's currently set to 0.02. 903 hertz but we're also modulating this with a random engine so if we come over to random one you can see lfo1 rate is being modulated by 0 0.07 so i'm going to switch that on and in random one we've got a sample and hold set uh, the source is white noise we've got the clock triggering it and then there's a little bit of rise and fall we've got these two linked up here so the rise and fall is just to kind of smooth it off and then we've got the rate set to hertz and it's set to 8.04 hertz so that is quite a quick modulation going on there and now that it's on if we come over to our lfo you can see that this rate is no longer consistent if we switch that off it's just flowing through the cycle at a consistent rate but with this on it's just changing ever so slightly and randomizing it which is giving us the idea is it's to kind of emulate a sort of uh, organic analog tape style modulation on the fine tune so analog gear when it kind of go, drifts out of tune, it doesn't do it in a static way. It does it at random. So that's what we're trying to emulate by using the random engine on the LFO rate. So with that tiny, tiny modulation on the fine tune, we get this. If I switch that off. So we're getting a very small amount of pitch drift on it. We'll then come over to engine two. And again, we've got this set to wavetable, we've got the basic waveform loaded, and we've got the position set exactly the same with absolutely no modulation going on in the wavetable engine at all to keep it an analog style sawtooth sound. We're then using the unison engine in here as well. So again, it's set to classic, voices are set to two, and detune is set to 0.711 with the stereo up to 100%. So exactly the same as in engine one. We've then got the fine tune offset very, very slightly from engine one. So this, it's basically set to 0 0.104 semitones there. We're also, as you can see, modulating this with LFO1 as well. So the pitch is going to be drifting on both of our engines. So it sounds exactly the same as engine one, but if we switch engine one on now, we get a nice warm sawtooth there. So 
So as you can hear there, that fine tuning offset against engine one is giving us that nice kind of warm detuned analog sound. So now let's switch on filter one. Okay, so we're only using the one filter in this preset and it's set to matrix 12. We've got the cutoff set to 159 hertz. We've got a little bit of resonance on here, a 0.144, and we have some keyboard following happening as well. So that is set to 0.296, and the mode is set to the low pass 24 dB. So now we're going to get a very stunted sound which you can barely hear, but when we switch on our envelope modulation, we get a nice filter opening up there. Giving us that nice kind of raw pad sound. So, our filter is being modulated by envelope 2 here, you can see we've got it set to 0.5 and in the actual envelope we've got the envelope shape, the attack is set to 2.99 seconds, we've got the decay set to 7.69 seconds, the sustain is set to just above halfway 0.575 and a nice long release here as well 6.53. So that's just going to be shaping our pad, giving us this nice ramp and quite a quick fall there as well. So now we're gonna go over to the effects and the first one that we've got here is the chorus. So I'll switch that on. So we're getting a really nice thick warbling chorus sound there. So you can see the dry wet is set to zero but that's because it's being modulated by macro one. So because our macro is set to fully on we are getting the dry wet mix about 50% here. And this is just a preset from the chorus here. So this is set to the ensemble preset. So all you need to do to get this sound is just choose that ensemble preset there. We're then running it through a compressor so that we get a slight bit of kind of compression there just to thicken it up and glue everything together. So we've got quite a long attack there, 77.5 milliseconds. The release is set to 220 milliseconds and we've got the threshold set to minus 4.32 dB with a ratio of 3.48 to one. And the dry wet mix is set to completely wet. So all we're getting here is that compressed signal. So we'll come back to our multi-filter and we're not really gonna bother with our stereo panning here. So the stereo panning is on our macros. Now you can set the macros to whatever you want. So that's not 100% relevant here, but that stereo pan basically just gives us a nice wide stereo image where it just kind of moves between the two. If you want to set that up, all you need to do is put a stereo pan on it and then turn the amount up with your macro knob. So we'll come over to our auxiliary now and you can see we've got the send set to minus 7.53 and the return is set to minus 70 dB but that is again because it is being controlled by macro. So when we've got the macro all the way up, we're getting the full amount of return. So I think that goes up to zero dB there. We'll switch on the auxiliary there and we're gonna start with this pitch shifting delay. So you can hear we get this kind of pitch shifting afterwards. So we've got the dry wet mix set to 50% and we've got the time is synced to eighth notes. The stereo offset is up to full. We've got quite a bit of feedback on there, 0.42. We've got a three cent stereo detune. No pitch shift happening there. We've got it set the spray to 103 milliseconds. And then we've got a little bit of high pass frequency filtering going on here. What is giving us that pitching is the setting here. So we've got it set to octave up. Now the idea of this is it's going to give us a shimmer reverb, okay? So we can now turn on our reverb and we've got the signal set to 100% wet for that. The size is just under halfway. We've got a fair bit of pre-delay, 20 milliseconds. The decay is set very high, just above 0.9. 
damping is down to 0.464, stereo width all the way up, and again, we've got some input filtering going on here on the high pass. So now we're gonna get this kind of shimmer style reverb. And on that tail, we get this huge ambient reverb tail, but we've got this light pitching happening in it as well. And because of the correlation between our envelope two, which is controlling our filter, and the time sync in the pitch shifting delay, that pitch shift, that kind of shimmering that is coming in, is happening just as the filter starts to decay. So it almost rolls off of that attack there. So lastly, let's look at our mod wheel. So the mod wheel is set up to control our two multi-filter instances here. So let's switch that one on, and then we'll also switch on the one on our auxiliary. So these are both identical. They're both set to band pass filter. They're both set to a 24 dB slope. We've got the cutoff set to just above one kilohertz. We've got the resonance set to 0.969. And to start with, the dry wet mix is set to zero. This is being modulated by our mod wheel, and as you can see, we've got the full amount of modulation. So when we've got our mod wheel fully open, we get 100% wet, which means it's going to be fully filtered. So that gives us a kind of lo-fi sound. Get this really thin band pass there. which is quite nice for sort of adding evolution into it. So that was how to create the analog style pad Far From Shore. If you're an Arteria Pigments user and you'd like to download free presets every single month for completely free, just head to synthvault.net. Every month you can download five brand new presets for pigments, as well as presets for Omnisphere, a different Yuhi synth every month, and a different wildcard synth every month. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about my next video. Until next time, take care.